Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I do all sorts of planner and stationary stuff here on the YouTubes. And today we are going to go through goal setting for 2023. I'm gonna walk you through how I set up my goals and how you can follow along and set up your own. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what it's really like to set up your goals when you're dealing with things like anxiety about putting pen to paper and committing to stuff for the future. So stick around, I'm gonna take you over to the flat lay in a sec. So as you probably gathered from the intro, I did have a lot of anxiety about putting my 2023 goals pen to paper, solidifying them, calling them good. What I initially did this year was try to set up my goals on a separate piece of blank printer paper. The Sterling Ink Common Planner, which I will be using for 2023 in terms of goal planning, has a goal breakdown that I think is really great. So instead of putting pen to paper, and this is what I recommend to you also if you do have anxiety putting down your goals and setting them up for the new year, instead of putting pen to paper in your proper journal, take a blank piece of printer paper like I did, set up the system of goal tracking that you want to set up. So for me, it was Sterling Inc's version of that and write out all the goals you can think of. I did just that. I set up that system on a blank piece of paper and I brain dumped all the things that I wanted to accomplish for the next year. And at first I was really happy with what I had. I thought this is gonna be a full year, it's gonna be challenging, but I'm going to be able to do it and it's gonna be fun. And then I sat on that footage for days. I didn't do anything with my video, I didn't post it, I didn't tell anyone about it because I just felt overwhelmed. After sitting back and thinking about my goals and thinking about my 2023, it actually felt like I maybe couldn't accomplish everything that I had set out to accomplish. And I felt heartbroken because I'd put all this work in only to realize I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So I had to go back to the drawing board. So this is what came out of that first version of goal setting. This is the same goal breakdown that Sterling Inc. has in her planner, and it has my prioritized goals on the side, two more goals, and then some extra goals that I thought would be good to add for some reason. And at first, like I said, I really liked this, but it became clear that this was just gonna be too overwhelming and way too much stuff. So I'm really glad that I didn't put pen to paper in my nice new fancy planner at first. I'm really glad I did a draft version on a blank piece of printer paper. And I highly recommend if you suffer from anxiety with goal setting as well to do that. Take a scratch paper, it can be in a different notebook, it can be the back in the back of your current notebook or your new planner or whatever, and scratch out in a very messy way where you can cross things out, even if you don't know all the information, blah, 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 just scratch it out and see how you feel. And then what I want you to do is to <laughs> throw this away and sit on it for a couple of days. Put it in a drawer, don't look at it at all, just think about it just let it ruminate in your mind. And then once you have a couple of ideas, you can come back to the drawing board. So that's what happened with me. I sat about, I sat on this, I thought about it and I didn't feel good. I felt overwhelmed. So I decided I was gonna redo this. I kept the piece of paper. I just put it off to the side and I did some more research. So what I did and what I recommend you doing is a series of steps that's going to help you refine your goals and narrow them down. This is not following any particular system. I just made this up on the spot. I did what felt right. So I'm gonna walk you through what that looked like now. What I ended up doing was saying, okay, I've plotted out my goals in the Sterling Inc. method. What I need to do now is try a whole new method and that will help me see if I get the same results, if I'm prioritizing the same things. So I watched a few videos of the Moxie Life Planner setups. I don't use a Moxie Life Planner. It is a goal setting system, all self-contained in itself. And I know a lot of people here on YouTube like them. If you wanna search one and find one and do this yourself, you can find many tutorials on YouTube. But basically the part of their setup that I really wanted to do was their little rating system where you rate your satisfaction with each one of these areas of your life. And then I went back to the goal list that I had created and I was like, okay, it does not make sense that relationships is my number two goal, my number two priority, when I'm actually pretty satisfied in that area of my life. I had a, a pretty decent score in family and relationships apart from a couple of areas that I know I need to work on. So then <laughs> what I did after was I made a list of all of the actions that I typically need to do to function as a human being on a quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily basis. Now this includes things like budgeting. I need to budget every week, I just have to do it, or I cannot function. But it also includes things that I just need to live, like meal prepping. I need to make food in order to live. Um, I have shower on here, cleaning myself, doing the dishes, wiping down the kitchen counter. This is stuff that is not necessarily goal related, but that must get done on this, type of rhythm that I have set up here. 
and that I need to accomplish. And I did this because even though I had figured out that my priorities were out of whack with the like pseudo moxie life system that I did, I really needed to figure out if I would actually have time to complete the goals regardless of the priority that they were in. And so I needed an overview, a quick glance at what I needed to get done on a regular basis to see if I would have time to fit my goals in around those things. There was a little bit of this that was also like, how can I fit my goals into these sort of quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily actions? Because that is also how the Sterling Inc method is set up with a quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily actions part of the chart. But what I realized while doing this is that I need a lot of things and we all need a lot of things done on a regular basis in order to just function as human beings. And some of those things, especially feeding ourselves, clothing ourselves, getting lots of rest, everything like that needs to be done. It just needs to be done if we are ever going to accomplish something else. So I highly recommend you make a list of everything that you're already doing on a regular basis that helps you just function. Cleaning your apartment, taking your kids to school, taking a nap every day. Like what do you do that you must do in order to survive and take care of your basic needs? And then once you do that, you'll have a more realistic understanding of how much extra space and extra time you have in between those things to accomplish your goals. This really, really helped me because it showed me I actually do not have time. <laughs> I do not have infinite time and none of us have infinite time. So once you plan out your goals, run them through a couple of different systems, make sure you're also looking at your regular actions and thinking to yourself, okay, on a week to week basis, will I be able to accomplish the things that I set out to accomplish in my first draft of my goals. So after that, it began to emerge that I had a few priorities that I knew I needed to or wanted to accomplish that were slightly different from the way I had set it up previously, but were things like health and wellness, content, my spiritual life. These were areas that emerged in that second round of goal setting that seemed to be things that I really needed to focus on for 2023. So I had a brief like list of those things and I have that here on this piece of paper. It's not very complex. It's just mapping out a little bit more about those. But the more exciting part is this little sheet. Now this is what I used to take those goals that I knew I was not going to prioritize and distill them down into basic do more of actions and one time off actions that I could do that would set me up for success. So I was essentially taking them out of this system and just making a list of generally things I'd like to do more of, knowing that none of these things would be my absolute priority for the year. So I have relationships. I definitely will be sending birthday cards and presents, but I wanna call friends and family generally more, right? Generally more. I wanna check in on people when I think about them generally. That's an easy thing that has a trigger already that I can generally do more of, that I don't have to have like call four people this week or something like that on a more elaborate goal setup. I wanna be more invested in politics and my community, especially in Los Angeles politics where I live. The midterms taught me a lot about staying up to date with what's going on in your city. So I have things like that. I wanna generally be writing more poetry and generally attending a poetry group here or there. These are things that if I don't accomplish them, it's not the end of the world, but I'd like to include more of that in my life. I'd like to be writing reviews on Letterboxd and Goodreads for the things that I read and watch. Generally, if I miss a couple here and there, it's really not that big of a deal. I don't have a quota that I'm trying to meet because it's not a goal that is a priority for me. So brainstorm a list of do more of, but not priority things that are not fully mapped out goals. You don't need the stress of fully mapping out all of these goals on top of your other goals because it will just feel like you didn't accomplish them if they're not really your true priorities. Then I created an actions list. Now this is for things that are one-time actions that either I can accomplish once and then it's done for the year, or I accomplish it once and then I'm accountable to somebody else, which means I'll do it. All of my actual priorities and goals, my physical health, my spirituality, these things are things that I have to be accountable to myself for, which is why they are so detailed. But typically, if I'm accountable to somebody else, I will do an action. I will do it because I know somebody is depending on me. So I created this actions list. For example, find a place to volunteer and commit to it for a quarter. If I tell someone I'm going to go volunteer at this place, I'll meet you there then I will go, I simply will go because I'm accountable to another human being. Um, if I wanna visit home every two months or get breakfast with my family, I live about two hours, a two hour drive away from my family. We always like to meet in the middle for breakfast. If I wanna do that every two months, I tell them 
we're gonna do it every two months and then I'm accountable to them to do it. So these are one-time actions that can sort of kickstart a couple of these do more activities, kind of get that more into my life without really it being a fully fleshed out goal. This was how I made space for all of the goals on this side of the list that I'm actually not going to prioritize in 2023. I know I wanna do more of those things. I don't wanna give it up completely, but I have to take it out of my goal setting system and I have to remove the pressure. Otherwise, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to get done. So I do recommend breaking this down into a little list if it's helpful for you guys, but if it's not, you can always skip this step. So then <laughs> what I did was I took the goals that were emerging as my priority goals, which were health and wellness, spirituality, reading, and then my content, which I'm not gonna show you the content page, but you get the idea. No spoilers on this channel. I took the things that were emerging as priorities for 2023 and I broke them down again. Yes, again. I stuck with the someday, one year, half year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily map from Sterling Inc. Because like I said, that is the planner that I'm gonna be using in 2023. And I fleshed out what that goal looks like now after I've done you know, all this research. I mapped out what that goal looks like now. I highlighted things that I know I need to track. So if there's something in here that I need to track in some capacity, I make sure it's highlighted. And then I made sure I had areas for where to track it. So for example, for losing weight in the new year, I know I need to be tracking my weight and I will be doing that in my fitness pal, for example. So I made sure I had trackers for everything, whether that was digital or in one of my planners. And I just wrote a few sort of like startup activities that I can do for each one of these. So for example, spirituality, I have a few courses that I want to complete that I've already paid for that I know I want to accomplish in 2023. And I have sort of startup costs, what I need to do in order to uh, get started on those things. Same thing with reading, which is like a lower tier goal for me. It's going to be something that I want to do regularly, pretty regularly, but, and then I did the same thing with reading as well and with my content, but again, we're not going to go too far into content today. So then once I was done with this, I went back and I did goals version two. So version one, very messy, very haphazard, very intense, lots of stuff that I was planning. Version two, much more streamlined, had only the priority goals and didn't have a bunch of the nonsense. Now, this is super loose still. This is very sketchy. And when I put it into my planner, I will refine it even further and make sure I have everything that I need to have. But this is pretty close to the final version. And I definitely feel good about the goals I have over here on the sidebar and the actual areas of my life that I'm working on. So let's go through them. My number one goal is gonna be health and wellness. I need to take care of myself this year. I do have a lot of issues around anxiety and other mental health stuff that keeps me from taking care of my physical body. So I need to take care of my physical body this year. I have that I'd like to lose 30 pounds this year and I have that broken down into the monthly, weekly, quarterly, etc. goals, but my basic everyday tasks are gonna be really important. And that's why it's a priority because health has to be attended to every single day. I have to eat according to my meal plan. I need to calorie count. I need to track my exercise. And then I have a daily gratitude journal thrown in there so that I don't disconnect my physical health from my mental health too much. I really don't wanna be in the situation where I'm focusing so much on physical health that I ignore my mental health. But my mental health has been actually on the upswing <laughs> in 2022. So I'm pretty pleased with where it's at. Now I need to channel that into taking, taking care of my physical health so that someday I can feel strong and live the life I want to live with the people who I love. Then I have some financial goals, but we're gonna skip that. It's not uh, really a strict goal. It mostly has to do with how I'm budgeting and the habits around how I'm managing that. Then I have spiritual and personal growth as another priority. I already have three courses that I am a part of that I want to finish by the end of 2023. I've paid for the courses. I just need to complete them, basically. And the schedule for them is super easy. I just need to watch the videos, do the worksheets, post in the group communities, everything like that. And then I will be done <laughs> at the end of 2023. And that is gonna help me be more aligned with my goals and have a spiritual path that is gonna guide me in my life. Then down here at the bottom, I have reading, which is actually a pretty simple goal. I just want to eventually be an artistic and well-read person who reads and uses what I read. I used to read a ton before I went to college and before I started my adult life. And I just 
really miss who I was when I was a reader and I really miss knowing things and always having a book to talk about and always having something to do because I was invested in a new series or a new idea. So I want to read 24 books and take some notes on them during the course of the year. Obviously that breaks down to two books a month and I want to try to write reviews on Goodreads. It's so much less intense than the full fleshed out like hobbies version of this that I initially did. So this is a good example actually of what you can accomplish if you do this whole step. I took hobbies, which was be a well-rounded reader, writer, thinker about art and culture, which is true, I wanna be that. I wanna live into that version of myself. I took this goal, which meant recording all movies and all books in a public place, no matter what I read or consumed. I had a specific amount of letterboxed and Goodreads stuff that I had to do on a monthly basis. I had writing goals in this hobbies section. This hobby section was like six goals in one goal. It was crazy. So I ended up just breaking that out into like, you know what? The basic truth is I just want to read more. I just want to read more. So that's very, very simple compared to that. And it's really one that I'm proud of, <laughs> like pulling apart and narrowing down. And then of course, my other priority is going to be content, which is gonna be turning Rachel and Theory into something really fun for all of us, where we can hang out, plot our goals together, nerd out about the cool stuff that's getting released, all of that kind of stuff. I have a little career section down here at the bottom, but that's mostly covered in finance, so I don't really need that down there. It's not like a real thing. Um, but yeah, that just goes to show you, I went from like seven-ish to nine-ish goals to five goals with three priorities, content, physical health and wellness, and spiritual and personal growth. And I'm really, really, really happy with that. I'm really, really, really happy with this. And I know I just walked you through like a whole monster load of work that may seem unnecessary or irrelevant or too much to do when it's just a goal or just setting goals. But if you have as much anxiety as I have about putting pen to paper and committing to your goals. I really, really can't recommend some of these tips enough, especially taking the goal setting system that you're using and sort of translating your goals into a second system just to really test them. And the other thing I recommend is to take time, take space. The distance between when I set all this up and when I did all this work was like a week. It was a long, time for someone who is supposed to be uploading this video, getting content out about this stuff. Like I was planning on posting this a few weeks ago, but I really needed to just take the time to think about what I wanted to do because I can't confidently show you guys my goals, knowing that you're going to ask about them, knowing that you're going to post your own goals in the comments without being honest about the work <laughs> that it took to get here. You have to remember that your goals are about your life. They're not about anybody else's life. You don't have to copy me or copy anybody else in terms of how they live their life or even how they set up their goals. I just took you through my whole system, but you don't even have to copy that. You don't even have to set up your goals like this. If you just wanna have one goal for next year, that is so fine. You know your life the best and you are gonna be the one who's living it. So you might as well make sure your goals are focused narrowed down, that you're clear on what your priority is, and that it's something that you can accomplish. Because I could not in my wildest dreams accomplish all of this in one year. I just couldn't. So I really wanted to set it up well. I really wanted to get my priorities down. And I really wanted to spend the time to think about the goals and just let them ruminate within my little head and try out a bunch of different ways of thinking about them in order to wrap my mind around what I wanted to actually get done. If you leave this video and just take one thing with you, just take the knowledge that you can do rough drafts. You don't have to set it up in your perfect, beautiful new planner right away. You don't even have to set it up before the start of the year. If you don't know what your goals are and you aren't ready by January 1st, you can come back to this video and do all of these steps like mid-January. Who cares? It's your goals, it's your life. Give yourself the freedom of setting up a really messy, brutally honest version of your goals, one that has everything you want to accomplish, and then ones that have a more realistic view, a more structured view, a view that takes into account what you actually need to get done on a week to week, month to month basis outside of your goals. One that accounts for what life is gonna throw at you, one that accounts for your energy levels at different points of the year. Just be realistic with yourself and know that it's totally okay to make a billion rough drafts on your goals. The most important thing you can do for yourself is take time and see how things sit with you. That is my number one recommendation for 
dealing with goals with anxiety because when we're anxious, we wanna move really fast. We wanna set things up, we wanna be proud of what we set up and we wanna move through it. Anxiety wants you to make a false start. Anxiety wants you to set things up so that you can fail at them, so that you can be more anxious. It just wants to live on your brain and feed off of you. But if you take the time, I promise you can get to something like this. And I don't even have them in my planner yet, <laughs> in my goal planner. I'll probably do that in the setup video when I film the setup for my Sterling Inc. common planner. So stay tuned for that, I guess. But you know, the most important part isn't gonna be how nice they look in my planner. The most important part is gonna be that I feel good about them when I've drafted them out and I'm ready to set them pen to paper committing in my planner. So, okay, I hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know which tips you're definitely going to use in the comments down below. Tell me what your goals are for 2023. I would love to know if you have them all mapped out or if you're still working on it and you're not gonna get to it for some time, that's totally okay too. I just want this to be a space where we can freely express <laughs> our nerves, our anxiety, our agita about setting our, up our goals for 2023 and then committing to them anyways. You know, you gotta do the hard thing at some point but I want everyone to know it's okay to go easy on yourself and really take time and really try to de-stress the whole process. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hang out, comment down below. I love you guys so much. I really appreciate all your support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.